The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Death Plant. It is 11 o'clock on the night of September 18th, 1946. 14 miles east of Pembroke, Texas, on State Route 70, stands the First Community Church. Each Wednesday night, members of the congregation have been donating their services to the construction of a recreation hall. The evening's work is just over, and Tom Peters, a farmer, stands in the parking area, waiting for his wife to catch up to him. Show me! All right! And don't forget, Mrs. Weezy, will you mix the flour and be sure you blend it first with a couple of tablespoons full of... Show me! You're going to stand there, John, the whole night? Oh, right. Oh, that man. I know what you got. No more patience than a bull in fly time. I'll call you tomorrow, honey. What makes you always in such a hurry? Somebody in this family's got to be in a hurry. Leave it to you and never get anywhere. Oh, now, Tom, you know you don't mean. Uh, Tom, you left the motor running. We sure left it running. Told you I was going to. Battery's almost dead. Oh, yes, I forgot. Yeah, that no good, Will Fenton. Sell me a heap like this and call it a pickup truck. <laughs> ah, it's getting so a man can't trust nobody nowadays. You know what I'm going to do, Sylvie? I'm going to take him to law, just like I told him tonight. You'll do no such thing, Tom Peters. Will, too. Man's still got some rights around here. Good let people like Wasn't Will Fenton... Wasn't that a know... pretty dress she had on tonight? Uh, who? Will Fenton's wife. Oh, she's such a pretty little thing, anyhow. He sure is good to her. Mm-hmm. Why, that that's the third new dress she's had in four months. There, you see what I mean? Goes around cheating on his people so as he can buy dresses for his wife. Tom, Tom, mm-hmm. now, don't take on so. Mm-hmm. You know how hard trucks are to get, and we waited Not a long... Not for this piece of junk. I tell you, Sylvie, I'm going to take him to court. Oh, <laughs> oh you've told him that every day since you bought the truck. Then mm-hmm. I'll do it, too. You see if I don't. You oughtn't argue with him like you did tonight. At least not so close to the church. Mm. Well, here's the outer gate already. Don't take long when you got something to ride in. <laughs> Maybe I better get out and open the gate so you can keep the motor no, running. No, 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 I'll open it. You just sit there and... Now, look what it's gone and done. Died on me. I told you. You didn't tell me no such thing. Well... I reckon maybe you did. Oh, you get it started again. Oh, that no good, Will Fenton. Well, reckon I better get out and open the gate. If I can push over that little rise, we can coast down the slope and maybe she'll catch. Now, you be careful, Tom Peters, pushing trucks at your age. Just don't you worry about me. Tom? Yeah, what? There's funny sound. Here, like something chicken. Oh, it's just the engine cooling off. You women. You never understand nothing. I got to get me a bumper gate one of these days. Business getting out every time you no, want to open. chicken don't sound like no engine cooling off. Now, Sylvie, I told you it was just... Ah! Oh. Oh. Sylvie! Sylvie! explosion of the truck killed Sylvie Peters immediately. Her husband was found unconscious and taken to the Pembroke Hospital where his condition was pronounced serious. The sheriff investigating the case requested the help of a Texas ranger, 
and Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned, joining the sheriff at the scene of the explosion a little after 2 a.m. Yeah, there's the truck, Jace. What's left of it? Not a very pretty way to die. Murder's never very pretty, Sheriff. The gate, was it open when you got here? Yeah, Tom must have got out to open it. That's how he missed getting killed. <laughs> this bomb, Jace, you reckon it was tossed at him? Not likely. The way the cab of the truck's blown, I'd say the bomb was planted in there. We'll have to... You see something? Yeah. Here, hold my light, will you, Sheriff? Sure. You're right on that spot. Yeah. Here's part of your bomb, Sheriff. Why, it's just a hunk of split lead pipe. That's right. Plumbing pipe from the looks of it. How do you know that's part of the bomb? Tom might have been carrying lead pipe in the back of his truck. Look at the way it's split down the seam. The powder burns. Move the light around a bit, Sheriff. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Hold it. Here's something else. What is it, Jason? A mainspring out of an alarm clock. I'll call Austin and get a lab crew to give this place a good going over. At least we know what killed Sylvia Peters. A homemade time bomb. We went to the hospital and waited. A little after seven that morning, Tom Peters was conscious and strong enough to answer questions. He was covered with bandages, but he opened his eyes when we walked into his room. Hello, Tom. Uh, Tom, this is Ranger Pearson. He'd like to ask you a few questions. Mr. Peters. Oh, now easy, Tom. Sometimes, when I'd be working out in the fields and it was hot, She'd come all the way out just to bring me a picture of Riverdale. Oh, now, Tom, you don't have to talk about it. Thirty-two years. We've been married. Thirty-two years. Mr. Peters, do you have any idea who might have done this? Will Fenton is the one that just... Oh, easy, Tom. Easy, boy. What makes you sure Will Fenton set that bomb? I, I was going to take it to court on the gun and that truck he stole me. That's why he blew it up. So as I couldn't move nothing. But, Tom, Will Fenton wouldn't try to kill you just because he was scared of going to court. How long ago did you buy that truck, Mr. Peters? Five... Six days ago. <laughs> Fenton lived far from here, Sheriff. Ten miles. A little less, maybe. You gotta get it, Sheriff. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Peters. If Will Fenton set that bomb, we'll get him. <laughs> We drove out to the Fenton farm and found an attractive young woman in the kitchen whom the sheriff introduced as Vern Fenton, Will's wife. She told us Will was expected any minute, settled down over some coffee and waited. Mrs. Fenton had already heard about the death of Sylvia Peters. I just can't understand it. Who'd want to do something like that to poor Sylvie? That's what we're trying to find out, Miss Fenton. She was so sweet. When we moved here, she was the first one to come visit us. You and your husband aren't from around here then, ma'am? No. I was raised on a ranch about a hundred miles east. Will worked on a ranch near us. How long have you had this place? Since right after we got married. Not quite a year now. Ranger, you haven't said why you wanted to see my husband. We just want to ask him a few questions about last night. But I don't understand he... Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Will. Yeah, this is Ranger Pearson. He wants to have a little talk with you. All right, sure, sure. Glad to oblige. You want some coffee, Will? No, yeah, bother, honey. I'll pour it myself. I'll do it. Uh, sit down. Thanks. Yeah, Ranger, what can I do for you? Mr. Fenton, I suppose you heard about what happened to Tom and Sylvia Peters last night. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. It's an awful thing. It's awful. It makes me feel real bad. 
I I sold Tom that truck. We heard there was a lot of hard feelings between you and Tom about that truck. Tom says you cheated him, Will. Says he was going to take you to court about it. Well, that's crazy, Sheriff. Tom knew that truck is in bad shape when he bought it. But you did have some hot words over it later, huh? Well, you know, Tom gets a little excited, that's all. You were at the church last night, weren't you? Sure, sure, me and Vern both. Did you stay inside the recreation hall the whole time? Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe I stepped out for a little air. Not sure. I think you'd better try to remember. You saying I set that bomb in Tom's truck? I'm not saying anything yet. But how did you know it was set there? It might have been thrown in when Tom stopped at his gate. Yeah, well, that's what everybody's saying. It was a time bomb. Look, Ranger, I admit Tom and I had a few words, but you don't think I'd kill him, do you? There's been a murder. It's my job to ask questions. Oh, sure, sure. You're only doing your job. <laughs> you're barking up the wrong tree if you think I killed him. You better find somebody who really hated Tom. That's just what we're going to do. Don't go too far from your farm, Mr. Fenton, because we might be back to see you. <laughs> spent the rest of that day and half the night checking on people who knew Tom Peters and his wife. It was about 2.30 the next morning when we decided to turn in. The sheriff suggested a cup of coffee at the diner across from the courthouse. Uh, man, I know one thing, Jace. I sure am tired. Yeah, I could use a little sleep myself. Howdy, Sheriff. Ranger, what'll it be? Coffee for me, Eddie. Ranger? Same. Two coffees. You fellas up pretty late tonight. Working on that Peters bombing? That's right. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find the fellow that did that. How do you mean? Well, now, I don't want to be talked behind nobody's back, but it appears like everybody in town knew old Tom was feuding with Will Fenton about the pickup truck Will sold him. I wouldn't want Will to be sore at me. Hey, excuse me a minute, Jen. Yeah, looks like everywhere we turn, we get the story about the fight between Will Fenton Eddie's and Tom. Down. Must have heard it 20 yep. times already. Yeah, just yeah. we'll head out there again in the morning. Have another talk okay, with Okay, I'll get him for you. The phone operator wants you, Sheriff. Says it's right important. Oh, thanks, Eddie. How was old Tom, Ranger? Heard he was hurt pretty bad. Well, he'll pull sure, through sir. all right. The doc said tonight he was oh. out of danger. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure glad to hear it. Old hey, Tom, you know, he blows off a mite of steam, but... What? She don't mean nothing. We'll be right out. I ain't sure gonna miss Sylvie, though. Hey. All right. Jace, come on. We're not going to get to sleep yet. What's the matter? That was Will Fenton. He just found a bomb under his house. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Whatever you drive the car... There is always an unseen, unwelcome passenger with you. That passenger is danger. The danger of a traffic accident. Unfortunately, every person seems to have the absurd notion that he bears a charmed life, that no traffic accident can happen to him. But it can, and too often it does. So when you're behind that wheel, don't take chances. Obey all traffic rules. Drive safely for life, your life, and the lives of others. We continue now. With Tales of the Texas Rangers and tonight's case, Death Plant. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. The sheriff and I rushed out to the Fenton farm. We spotted Will standing in front of the house in a bathrobe. When we pulled up, he came running over to the car. Where's the bomb, Mr. It was in a box. It's ticking like a clock. Where is it? I'll show you. I moved it away from the house out in that field there. Yeah, it's a good way to get your head blown off. My wife, she's still asleep. I didn't want to scare her none. Uh, there it is by that mesquite over yonder. All right. You stay here with the sheriff. What are you figuring to do, Jace? Deactivate that bomb. Yeah, well, now, don't be crazy, Jace. It won't hurt nobody where it is. Let it go off by itself. I need it for evidence. Do you want some help? No, thanks. Be careful, Jace. Yeah. How are you making out? It's all right now, Sheriff. Sure now, Ranger. You sure that thing's out of commission? Well, it should be. I pulled the wires and stopped the clock mechanism. Another homemade job, Jace? Yeah. 
Hey, you know, if I'd have thought of that, I, I probably should have dumped it in a pail of water and saved you all that wrist ring. That's the worst thing you can do with a bomb, Mr. Fenton, unless you know what it's made of. It might have chemicals in it that get set off by water. How'd you happen to find it? Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I woke up uh, maybe a few minutes before I tried to get you. Uh, I thought I heard somebody walking around outside the house, and I come out to How look. How come you don't keep a dog out here, Will? Well, all kind of my wife, Sheriff. She's scared of him. Exactly where'd you find this bomb, Mr. Fenton? Right under where our bedroom is. You think of anybody who might have planted it there? I don't have to think. I saw who did it. You what? Yeah, I saw his car when he drove away. I knew that jalopy anywhere. It was Clint Mockler. Who's Clint Mockler? Young cowpoke I used to work with before I got married. He's no good. Never was. Used to bother Vern all the time, and he stole the diamond ring from the boss his wife got sent to, to Huntsville for two years. How long ago was that? Yeah, maybe 15 months. Probably out on parole, Jace. Uh-huh. You sure it was him here tonight? I saw him, I tell you. And a little over a week ago when I was coming back from town, he was parked in his jalopy a mile or so down the road. He was just, just sitting there looking up toward our house. Did you tell your wife about that? Oh, no, no, no. It'd get her all upset. I see. Then tonight was the second time you've seen him around here. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Only way I can figure it is when he got out of jail, he heard about Vern and me being married, made him sore enough to want to kill us. You sure you didn't see him around church Wednesday night? No. Uh, that don't mean he couldn't have been there. I've been thinking like you, Jace, but it just don't make sense. If this fellow was mad at the Fentons here, why would he want to kill old Tom and Sylvie a- unless he was crazy? I don't think he was crazy, Sheriff. Got a hunch he just made a mistake. How do you mean? Don't forget, Sheriff, Tom Peters only bought that pickup a week ago from Mr. Fenton here. Yeah. Oh, then it was the Fentons he was after all the time. Only he didn't know the truck had changed hands. Could be. Yeah, you gotta get this Markler, Ranger. He's no good. He try to kill us again, maybe next time we make it. You gotta get him. We have to find him first. Uh, he's working over at the Williams Ranch now. Place about 50 miles from here in the Dalby. Well, something wrong? Oh, Vern, honey. Thought she was asleep. I heard you talking. What's that thing? We had a little excitement, ma'am. It's all right now. Honey, I... I don't want you to get upset, but... I reckon I have to tell you sooner or later. Might as well be now. Clint Markler tried to set this bomb under a place. Clint? But... But he couldn't have. He's in jail. Not anymore, Miss Fenton. But don't you worry. We'll get him. Well, he couldn't have tried to kill us. I don't believe it. Honey, you don't know him the way I do. I work with him. He's no good. He's rotten clear through, like I always told you. Well, Jace, I reckon we better get going. Yeah, I want to get this bomb to Pembroke for the lab crew to check over. Then if we hurry, we can make the Williams Ranch before breakfast. At the ranch, they told us our best bet for finding Clint Mockler was to take horses and look for the foreman, Hank Snyder. He described Clint and told us he was at a loading pen near the Santa Fe tracks. As we approached, we saw several men loading cattle into the cars. Reckon that's him over there, Jace, to straddle that fence. Yeah, we'll soon find out, Sheriff. Whoa. Whoa, Charky. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, you. Yeah? You Clint Mockler? That's right. What you want? Come here a minute. All right. Shove up next empty, will you? Uh, what you want, Ranger? The Sheriff and I want to talk to you. What about? You been over to Pembroke lately? Maybe. Why? Did you see the Fentons? Hey, what's all this about? You're still on parole, aren't you, Clint? So what? Ain't against the law to go to Pembroke. Why did you want to see the Fentons? Vern's an old friend of mine. Guess I just want to talk to him. Did you talk to him? No. Why not? Oh, well, when I got out of jail, I wrote Vern a letter. She didn't answer, but last week I decided to drive over anyway. What kept you from seeing her? Nothing. But after I got there, I started thinking maybe he didn't want to see me. Then Will drove past in his truck, and I knew when I saw him, it wouldn't be any good for me to go up there. Did Will stop and talk to you? No. Slowed down, just looked at me. Look, Ranger, what's all this about, anyhow? Somebody put a bomb in that truck. It killed a woman named Sylvie Peters. We figured the killer meant to get Will and his wife, because last night he put a bomb under Will's house. Well, did... Vern get her? No, she's all right. What about you? You were seen driving away from the Fenton farm early this morning. That's a lie. I wasn't anywhere near. Where were you? In town. Anybody with you? No. What time did you get back to the ranch? I don't know. Maybe three. Out till three in the morning and got to get up at five? What are you trying to hand us, boy? I don't need much sleep. 
I got plenty of it down in Huntsville. How about Wednesday night, Clint? Where were you then? Wednesday? Well, I, I drove over to see a friend about 15 miles south of here. What's your friend's name? I want to talk to him. It won't do any good. Why not? Because when I got there, it wasn't home. I think you better come back to Pembroke with us. On this range, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Come on, Clint. Let's go. Look, Ranger, how long I got to stay here? I told you everything I know. I'm afraid it's not enough. Unless you can prove where you were the last two nights. Why can't I prove it? Nobody saw me. You know why, don't you? Because you're lying. The first night you were over at the church, planting a bomb in the Peters' truck. I don't even know the Peters. Of course you don't, but you know Will and Vern Fenton, and it was them you were trying to kill. That ain't so. Why would I want to kill Vern? How long have you known Vern, Clint? Going on four years. You know her pretty well, didn't you? I was crazy about it. We're going to get married. Would have, too, if If you hadn't gone to jail. Yeah. I don't blame her, though. Not wanting to wait for a jailbird. Sure, I got a little sore when I heard you married Will, but I wouldn't kill her. You got to believe that. Are you still in love with her, Clint? Yeah, I guess I am. And you didn't try to kill her? No. No, somebody's trying to put the finger on me, just like last time when they said I stole a diamond ring. What about the ring? I never took it. Somebody must put it in my pocket. Didn't even know it was there. They searched me. Now you're trying to put me away again for something I didn't do. You were seen driving away from the Fenton farm just after the bomb was planted. Who saw me? Will Fenton. Oh, I did. Wait a minute. Now I'm beginning to get it. What? What a dope I am. All the time I was in the pen, I tried to figure you planted that ring on me. Now I know. It was Will Fenton. Making up lies won't help you none, Clint. Why would I want to lie now? I served my time for stealing a ring, didn't I? But I didn't steal it. Will Fenton did. What makes you think so? That ain't hard to figure out. He was always jealous of me and Vern. Warner for himself. That's why he got me out of the way before, and that's what he's trying to do now. Sheriff, you got somebody we can leave Clint with for a while. Deputies in the next room. Take him in there, will you? Yeah. Come on. Look, you see, he's trying to frame me again, Ranger. That's what he's trying Hold to do. Hold this fellow for a spell, will you, Charlie? You ready to file charges against him, Jase? Not yet, Sheriff. What's the matter? You don't believe the stuff he was handing us, do you? I don't know. There's still a few things that don't feel right. Like what? Like Will telling us where Clint Mockler worked. How did he know? Well, he... Probably from that letter Clint wrote to Miss Fenton. Yeah, that's probably the way he found out. But I got a hunch he opened the letter and she never saw it. What makes you think that? Because she didn't even know Clint was out of prison. What does this all prove, Jace? That maybe a husband's jealousy is behind the whole thing? How would you say Clint felt about Will's wife? I'd say he was still pretty sweet on her. So would I. And if he is... Why would he want to kill her? Are you saying Fenton planted that bomb under his house himself? I'm not saying yet. Then there's something I don't get. If that's true, it was Will Fenton who killed Sylvie Peters. Uh Uh-huh. But that don't make sense. It does if Fenton wanted Clint to have a real murder to answer for. Get him out of the way for good. He'd have to be awful smart to plan it that careful. What's our next step, Jase? Talk to Mrs. Fenton. Find out if she still cares anything about Clint. And if she does? And we'll see what makes a jealous husband tick. Oh, howdy, Ranger. Sheriff, sure. Will. Come on in. Did you pick up Clint Mockler? Your wife around, Mr. Fenton? Yeah, sure. Do you mind calling her? Oh, sure, sure. Where, in, honey? Yeah. Well, come in here a minute. I still don't see why you want her. What is it? Oh. I'll answer your question now, Mr. Fenton. We picked up Clint Mockler today over at the Williams Ranch. Oh, it's fine, Ranger. We can all breathe easier knowing he's behind bars now. You mean he did it? We don't know yet, ma'am, but we're holding him for investigation until we get this bombing business straightened out. But he wouldn't do it. I I know he wouldn't. Looks pretty bad for him, Miss Fenton. Honey, I've been telling you all along. You don't know him. He's just no good. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Mr. Fenton, when you saw Clint's car down the road about a week ago, did you stop and speak to him? Mm, No. Why should I? Then how did you know he was working over at the Williams Ranch? Well, I don't know. I I, I could have heard it in town. We understand that Clint wrote your wife a letter after he got out of prison. 
Could you have learned it from that? Clint wrote me a letter? That's what he says, ma'am. How about it, Mr. Fenton? Did he? I suppose he did. I suppose I opened it. Nothing wrong with a husband protecting his wife against a criminal, is he? What do you mean, opening my letter? It's no good, honey. I tried to tell you. I only took that letter so you wouldn't get upset. That's not it. You kept his letter from me because you were afraid. Honey, will you listen to I've me? I've listened to you long enough telling me not to wait for Clint, talking I... me into marrying you when I didn't love you. Honey, You I... told me I'd learn to love you. Well, I didn't. And you know why? Because I still That's love enough. you. That's enough. Talk about our private affairs when we're alone. Uh, anything more you want from us, Ranger? We'd like to search your house, if you don't mind. Yeah, what for? I think we might find some things that'll help us clear up this case. I suppose I say no. Maybe this warrant will change your mind. Okay. What do you want to look at? We're looking for any pipe or wire you have around. Uh, sure, sure. I got some sewer pipe and bailing wire out in that shed. You're welcome to see it. That's not what the ranger means, Will, and you know it. Lead pipe and electric wire. The kind they use to make a bomb. <laughs> what would what, it prove if you found it? Nothing till we get it to the lab. Then we could tell if it was the same kind used in both bombs. Yeah, there's none of that stuff around here. How about the pipe and the I closet? told you once before, Ranger, I tell you again, you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, you just have... how about the pipe in the closet? How about it, Mr. Fenton? Oh, that, that stuff, that, that, that ain't what you're after. I'd like to take a look at it. I'll show you, Ranger. Pause it right this way. I, I know the pipe she's talking about. That ain't what you're after, Ranger. Let the Ranger be the judge of that, Will. Uh, sure, sure. It's in here, Ranger. I saw it last week. It's right in here. One large and... Now, wait a minute, honey. I know where it is. Women don't know anything about pipe. She... Look behind these boxes. Here it is. Right here. Hold it. I kill you. Hold it, I say. I kill her. Drop that pipe. Let me get her. Go. Let me go. Let me go. As soon as I get these cuffs on you. Oh, no, I... no, you're all right, Miss Benton. Just I don't want to kill her. I can't have her, neither can he. I'm killer. I... You've done all the killing you're going to do, Fenton. Now it's the state's turn. Faced with the laboratory evidence against him, Will Fenton made a full confession to the murder of Sylvie Peters. On October 16, 1946, he was tried and convicted. On November 22, 1947, at Huntsville Penitentiary... He died in the electric chair. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Virginia Gregg, Bill Johnstone, Parley Bear, Charlotte Lawrence, and Lamont Johnson. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Now enjoy the big show with guest stars including Jean Carroll, Ed Archie Gardner, Ann Southern, Hildegard, Robert Cummings, and your glamorous hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then it's mirth and music with Phil Harris and Alice Fay. Later, Theater Guild on the Air co-stars Brenda Marshall and William Holden in the exciting story of The Lost Weekend. The big show, the Phil Harris, Alice Fay show, Theater Guild on the Air. Hear all three on NBC. Next, it's the big show. All this and Tallulah, too, on NBC.